welcome everybody. You just entered into the winning zone. Winning zone. Winning zone. Today, I will be taught the word of God. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I am ready to receive the incorruptible, indestructible, ever living seed of the Word of God. I will never be the same in Jesus' name. Amen. You just entered into the winning zone. Winning zone. Winning zone. The worship is because of who you are.
Because you're free. You are free. Listen. Society would like you to hide who you are. But they don't hide who they are. So live free. Dance. Rejoice. Enjoy this Christian life. It's not just a title. It's a way of life. He died for you so you could be free to live eternally. Only a God would do that. He gave you everything, your destiny, so live free, be free. Listen, you're free to run, run your race, whatever it is, you're free to dance, you are free, with all your might, be free to live the life that God has for you. Because you're free. I am free. I am free. I am free. I am free to run. They're talking about me. I am free to dance. He freed me in here. I am free to live my life. So are you. He made you free. I said, I am free to run. I run my race, not yours, not his, my race. I am free to dance over every problem, every circumstance. I'm totally free to live. A life is not worth living if you can't live. Don't be bound by circumstances and what I should have did and my mistakes. All those things that try to hold themselves over you. Be free. What does that mean to be free? Whatever that is for you. Be that. Don't just exist. Be. Make a mark. Make a noise. Make a voice. Whatever your dreams and ideas are, pursue that, man, without abandon. That's what freedom is. Unapologetic. I apologize for nothing. I'm me. Hallelujah.
breaking every chain you set us free, fighting for the furthest heart you gave. Because he first loved me. He first loved you. Hallelujah. You dance over me while I'm unaware. You sing all around. But I never. Sound. Lord, I'm amazed by you. Lord, I'm amazed by you. Lord, I'm amazed by you. How you love me.
love, your everlasting love. We receive your love, and Father, not only do we receive your love, but we extend your love to those around us. The unchanging love that, that you gave us, and it wasn't for us just to keep, but it was for us to give to those around us so that they can experience the loving God that we all know. And we thank you so much. Thank you for your presence today. May our hearts be open to receive the, the word of God, the, the word that is so powerful that it changes our lives every single moment. And we thank you for it, Lord. We worship you today and give you all the glory in the name of Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. Nothing like the love of God. Amen. Amen. But before I um, share with you what the Lord has put on my heart, I just want to... Um, remind and encourage uh, the women to sign up for uh, our Women's Grace Conference. It's coming up in August. And um, there's an app on, uh, or there's a registration on the Summit app that you can go and uh, register there, all right? And for more details, you can stop at guest services, all right? So, um, and I'm so thankful for our praise team, and I love, um, you know, how Canaan mentioned, you know, he said, if, if you notice, we're talking about the love of God or singing. And, and that was something that I wanted to share with you today. And, you know, especially like with social media and the way that things are today, there's always an opportunity to share God's love. And if we look, and sometimes we don't even have to look very far, um, for an opportunity to exchange love instead of hate, to change love instead of bitterness, Right? And, and I just recently, I, I, uh, I made a post on uh, Facebook, and it, it was a quote that I had heard from a teaching that I was listening to by Joel Wolstein. And in the content of the, the context of the whole message, basically he was talking about get your mind off yourself. When you're going through situations and circumstances, stop thinking about yourself and begin to look out, begin to... Um, allow God to put others on your mind so that you don't consume yourself with what you're dealing with. Amen? And so, but the quote was, "Stop! Uh, it's not always about you. Um, let's see if I remember the quote. It's not, oh, um, take a break from yourself. It's not always about you, right? And so, you know, for the most part, everyone, amen, amen, but then there was someone that said, um, the, the quote said something like, um, basically, yeah, listen who's saying this with a $100,000 car or something. It was something crazy. And so, you know, I had many ways to go with that. Number one, Pastor would have said, leave it alone. <laughs> but I wanted to show some kindness there, right? So I chose to say something back. And I said, this, this, this post is about uh, encouraging and I said, I, it didn't say, never think about yourself. It says, don't always think about yourself. And then I said, you are love. I left it with the love of God. I could have said, it really isn't none of your business. <laughs> and how do you know? Someone could have given him the car. So there's so many ways that we can express love to people. And what I also loved was one of our amazing members, Brenda Mudd, came back with, and I know Brenda, so I know where she could have went with this. She chose to say, what a sweet and loving response. And again, it added more love to the love. 
And so I'm just saying, there are so many times that we can come off on people when they come in a wrong way. But because of the love of God that we have on the inside of us, why? We don't need to. We don't need to be right. We don't need to make, see, make them look like they're wrong. I wanted her to experience, you know what? There's a loving God out there. And he loves him and he loves you. And that is so true. So whatever it is that you're faced with this week and you have the opportunity to snap back at somebody with an evil thought or an evil word, choose love. Love wins every time. Amen? Amen. <laughs> uh, hallelujah. I got another side to that. No, I won't we'll leave that alone. Amen. I'm 100% agreement with my wife on that. Amen. Just want to just throw that out there. <clears throat> but on the other hand, anybody ever engage with somebody online? I don't put that person in that category. I guess they just didn't understand. But there's certain people that are just, you know what it means to, to troll? Okay. How many of you ever convinced a troller when you try to respond to them? Don't feed the troller. That's it. That's the word for you. Because there's no end to it. And you end up wasting all your, all your time. Not all your time, but I mean, you have been there an hour back and forth, back and forth. Ain't nobody got time for that. I just don't. I, <laughs> you know, because especially if, if I think I can win you, you know, I, I'll do that. Just they message me. You know, I'm not going to, you know, and then a lot of people, they just look in and see, see the back and forth and stuff. And all of a sudden, all, you get all these people spending all this time on there. I don't, you know, I use Facebook. It's, it's, a, it's like, anybody fish? And people think, well, Pastor loves Facebook. I don't, I mean, it's just like, you might not, you, if you fish and you might like a particular lake, but there's no fish in there, <laughs> right? There's no point. Well, oh, I love this lake. But if you're not catching no fish, you know, then you better go to another lake. It might not be as pretty, but the fish are there, right? There might be some junk around there, but the fish are there, okay? So that's the way I look at social media. You know, there's a whole lot of 1.4 billion people on Facebook. It's a great opportunity just to do a lot of good and, and just put, the, I, I, I put the stuff out there, but I don't argue with nobody. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Lord. I was telling uh, uh, Seth and Kenan about this story. Uh, Kenneth Hagin used to talk about when uh, this guy came up to him. It's a real little guy. And he came up to him after, after he preached. He said, you need to convince me that there's a God. He said, there might be a God, but I don't know. He said, if you don't convince me that there's a God and I die and go to hell, it's going to be your fault. <laughs> And then, so he said, God didn't tell me to, he told me to preach the gospel. He didn't tell me to convince anybody. And then the next night he came and preached. The same little guy came up to him. He said, you need to convince me that there's a God. Because if you don't convince me there's a God and I die to go to hell, it's going to be your fault. And he told him again. He said, God didn't tell me to convince anybody, persuade anybody. He told me to preach the gospel. The guy got, he, he left God, man. Next night, he preached again. The same guy came up to him, said the same thing. You need to convince me there's, that there's a God. If you don't, and I die to go to hell, it's going to be your fault. And he said the third time, God didn't tell me <laughs> to convince you of nothing. He told me to preach the gospel. And he, then he said, the guy looked at him, stuck his tongue out at him, and left. <laughs> Well, anyway, I'm glad you like that story. <laughs> but uh, you don't have to convince anybody. Just put the word out there. Thank you, Lord. Let's receive our offering. He who did not spare his own son but delivered him up for us all, how will he not free? How will he not with him freely give us all things? You know he loves you. I mean, we just sang about it. Right? And nothing will separate you from his love. 
Never forget that. He who did not spare. I mean, he, he gave his very best, our Heavenly Father. He didn't spare. Let's focus, let's highlight that word spare. He didn't spare. Didn't spare his own son. But that, I mean, that's love right there. How wide, how deep, how great is your love for me? How wide, how Sing about his love. How great is your love for me? Come on, sing a little bit of that. He's not going to let you, you're not going to fail. I don't care what you're up against. He loves you. Nothing will separate you from this love. It's not about your love for him, but his love for you. Here in his love, not that we love God, but that he loved us. We sit in amazement, Father. We stand here basking in your outrageous love. Just soak in his love right now. He loves you. You're not going to fail.
of all those things God will do what he said he will do he will stand by his word he will come through he said I will do what he By his word, he's already come through. No weapon formed against you shall not prosper. Oh, he. Promises are true. Everything he said to you, just believe and receive. God is not a liar. He is not a myth. He is not make believe. I promise you, he's real. If you were wondering, if God was fake, I'm not saying nothing. Things are the same over and over and over again. God must be fake, just like the Easter Bunny. Because I ain't seeing nothing. I guarantee you, if you just believe, you will see a manifestation. This is truth. You know, they always say facts. This is truth. God is very much real. Jesus did die, and he did rise for you. Just believe. There's a song that says, where would I be if not for your grace? 
It carried me through every season. Where would I be if not for your grace? It came to my rescue. And Father, I want to thank you for your grace. His grace is all you need. It truly is sufficient. Do you understand? I don't know why it seems like I'm pleading with you. But you need to know. You need to know. You need to know. God loves you so. God loves you so. There's nothing you could ever do to separate it. There's nothing you could ever do to cut it off. You'll never know how much it costs to see my sin upon that cross. I'll never know, I'll never know, I'll never know how much it costs to see my sin upon that cross. Everything you've ever done is under the blood everything. Anything you did today, anything you did three seconds ago, a negative thought, fears, worries, doubts, concerns, poverty, sickness, lack, and disease. There's one name that matters and that's greater than anything, any marital issues, any children issues, any addiction. They cannot stand against the name of Jesus. That name that is above every name. His name is Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. If that's the only name you can call on, if that's the only thing that comes to your head, that's the most powerful thing you could ever have. I'm telling you, y'all, this stuff is real. People are killing themselves because they think there's no hope. And it ain't older people that's doing it. It's babies hanging themselves, shooting themselves, overdosing. This is real life. You need to know you are loved. Get a revelation. My wife always says, when you understand the true revelation of what grace is, it's over. So ask God to reveal to you what does your grace truly mean to me? Grace isn't judging you. Hey, if you're having identity issues, grace covers that. If you're having gender issues, grace covers that. It covers the things you never vocalize. The stuff you don't want people to know, grace covers that. So it never comes out. He just washes it all away. Grace is sufficient. It's all you need. And it's okay to cry, to be angry, to be frustrated. But remember, there's another side of that. Be angry, but don't stay there. Keep moving forward. Grace is an empowerment. It not only covers you and lets you know that God isn't mad at you, but it also lets you know that you have inside of you enough to move forward. You have everything you need. Christ is enough for me. That's a song. Christ is enough for me. Christ is enough for me. Everything I need is in you. Everything I need. Christ is enough for me 
Oh, Christ, it's enough for me. Everything I need is in you. Everything I need. Because nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible. I said nothing is impossible for you. He holds your world in his hands. Christ is enough. Jesus is enough. If you've got Jesus, that's enough. You don't need more. Lord, strengthen my faith. You got all the faith you need. Lord, give me more grace. You got all the grace you need. Lord, I'm not strong enough. Yes, you are. When God breathed into Adam, he breathed the duplication of himself into him. That means everything that God entails, he breathed into Adam. That's why he knew the animals. That's why he knew all these things. As it is in heaven, so it is on earth. That's just not pertaining to the things God has made, but pertaining to who he is. And who he is in you, and you, and you, and me. He's the fulfillment of everything. And that's the name God gave you. He gave you the name Jesus. The Lamb. The bright morning star. The Alpha and the Omega. That covers it all. Your past, your present, and your future. <laughs> He's enough. You don't have to worry. Stop trying. I'm trying to get well. I'm trying to get free. I'm trying to do right with my wife. I'm trying to be better for my kids. I'm trying to work. I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying. And I just can't do it. God, help me. And he's like, that's right. Stop. And the reason why you stop is this. When Jesus, when God created the earth, he put everything in here for it. God never creates anything without it being complete. So the reason why you have to stop trying is because everything you need is already there. Just take the natural eyes off and see what's there. I hope you hear my heart. The trying days, religion living, Bible thumping, all that old stuff. I'm done with that, man. Lord, I want the real thing. Show me more. I want to go deeper. I want more of you. I'm tired of worrying about money. I'm tired of worrying about health. I'm tired of worrying, period. The song says, soon as I stop worrying, worrying how my story ends. That's when I let go, let God, let God have his way. That's when things start happening. Let go, let God, let go, and let God, let go, and let God, oh, let go. And let God let go, and let God, my system let go, and let God, you can't handle it, so let God, just let go, and let God, soon as you stop worrying, worrying how your story ends. 
that's when you let go and let God let love this way. Everything you need, just let it go. And let God, let God, let God have his way. Thank you, Lord. Let it go. The Bible says, casting all your care upon him. He cares for you. Woo! Say, let it go. Hallelujah. Think I better let it go. Hey. <laughs> y'all be seated. From y'all old school folks, know what I'm talking Where's Matt? Matt knows what I'm talking about. Think I better let it go. Let it go. <laughs> Amen. Let go of your worry. Let go of your care. Let go of your fear. Thank you, Lord. Well, I've got some appetizer here for you. Oh, we're going to receive our offering. Did I tell you all that? All right. They got it anyway. Amen. Um, don't want to leave you all out online. I hope you all are receiving that. I see somebody right now that's watching, and they've got tears. Some, something ministered to them. Um, let's see. Um, thank you, Jesus. Uh-oh. That's the wrong message. Um, See if you can grab, uh, what's the title today? God wants you, not God wants you healed. Healing belongs to you, something like that. What is it? God wants you healed. Okay, he does. He wants you healed. Amen. I do know what I'm preaching. There we go. Amen. So, but I got a little appetizer. Um, who's the greatest, who's the greatest dancer you've ever seen? I said, Michael Jackson? Are we in church now? Okay. So we're good. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if any church dancers. I know a lot of people dance in church, but I mean we don't we don't like measure or we don't have like greatest church dancers, right? So so what okay, so you said Michael Jackson. Okay. I know somebody dances better than that. I never thought about this, but you know, God is the greatest dancer. I want to help you to get out of your mind, you know, God is just this, just some mean God on the throne. And I like to give you scriptures for stuff because the song can kind of, some of the words in the songs, in that song we sing can go over our head when it says, you dance over me. And in case you're wondering, like, what's that all about? Uh, you dance over me when I'm unaware. I know that happens. But religion has, has just pounded into us this image of God as a big bully, and he's mean, and he's ready to clobber you at the least infraction, mistakes. He's ready to just pound on you or jump on you, uh, but that's not the kind of God that we serve. That's not your heavenly father. Actually, we, we call him Papa, Abba. It, actually, everybody say Abba. Um, let me, let's, let's look at that real quick in, in Romans chapter 8. I want you to see it. The translator sought to it to just leave this word untranslated. It's interesting left this one word in the middle of all of these English words, leaves this one word untranslated. That's there to show us something, to really, um, so, so this to jump off the page at us. Verse 17 talks about we're heirs of God and we're joint heirs with Christ. And, but verse 15 says, 
you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father, Abba. It's an it's a intimate word in the Greek. It's, it's, it's Abba. It means uh, Papa or Daddy. Get used to calling God Papa. I mean, call him that sometime, Father. He, my default mode in prayer and in communication with him, my default name to call God is Father. Sometimes Papa. Now, when you first start doing it, it seemed weird to, to refer to God Almighty like that. Now, he is, he's got all kind of names, and I, I teach on the names from time to time. Jehovah Rapha, our healer, Jehovah Nissi, um, our, our victory, Jehovah uh, uh, Ra, our shepherd, Jehovah Tishkenu, our righteousness, Elohim, the most high God, okay, El Shaddai, the God is more than, than enough. See, he has all these names, and they're all valid and appropriate, but my default mode is Father. See, Jesus came to reveal the name Father to us. Before Jesus, nobody ever referred to God as Father. In fact, the only time that, that Jesus referred to God as God, he always, if you read the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, you'll see that Jesus referred to God as Father all the time. Only one time that he called him God. You know when that was? When he was separated from his Father, when he took our sin upon himself. In the Garden of Gethsemane, he said, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? That's when he took our sin upon himself. Isn't that interesting? Only time he referred to God as God. He was intimate with his heavenly father. And that's how God wants us to be. Thank you, Lord. I don't even know if I get to my message today. I got these appetizers, but I take my time up. But uh, check this out. Zephaniah 3.17. Well, it's cool. You say, okay, he dances. I want you to picture, just picture God just looking over your life and dancing. Because, see, when you can see that, you can start dancing, too. Michael Jackson's got nothing on God. Uh, can, can you imagine? Who did Michael Jackson come from? So he's got to be the best dancer. Huh? Talking about the moonwalk. God, I believe God will surprise us when we see him. He said, let me show y'all something. Y'all think y'all can dance. You think y'all can sing. Let God say, he's the best singer. He's the best everything. Michael Jordan can't touch him. Hallelujah. So, um, y'all might think I'm kidding, but Look at this. Just jot it down. I, I don't have it queued up for you, but Zephaniah, you got these smartphones. Get you a smart Bible on that smartphone that can search for you. Amen. Thank you, Lord. The Lord, your God in your midst, the mighty one will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you with his love. He loves you. Somebody needs to hear that today. I believe there's somebody that's watching online that you, 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 you just got the Spirit of God just touched you through um, the ministry of, of Canaan. And that was the Lord using him. Thank you, Lord. And um, I believe it touched somebody. 
I can see somebody right now in the spirit. I can see them in, in tears. That's, that's God's love for you. God letting you know that everything's going to, to work together for your good. God is working. Man, something's coming over me right now. The people that you came in here with a heavy heart, but God is rejoicing over you right now. He's working all things together for your good. Things will turn out in your favor. There's some things that were, uh, you had some, somebody came in here, in here with some bad news. Somebody told them, gave them some bad news, but God's getting ready to reverse that thing. What it looked like bad news is going to turn out to be good news for you. Amen? Whoever that's for, go ahead and receive it and rejoice over yourself with God. I mean, amen, just, just rejoice and give God praise. He will, he will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you with his love. And it says, he will rejoice over you with singing. God sings over you. He rejoices. He dances over you. Huh? I can see him spinning around when he, when, he, when he thinks about you. Thank you, Lord. Another scripture coming to my mind. Psalm 115. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We're just flowing with the Spirit. Verse 12, the Lord has been mindful of us. He will bless us. Not he might, he will bless us. He will bless the house of Israel. He will bless the house of Aaron. He will bless those who fear the Lord. Both small and great. May the Lord give you increase. More and more. Somebody needs encouragement today. You know, even the strong, even the strong need encouragement. All of us need anybody that never wants, never needs any encouragement. I don't know how far this is going to go right now, but but I'm just going to just I'm in a flow right now. Somebody needs to be encouraged today. That that you you are blessed. Now, your circumstances might not look like you're blessed, but we walk by faith and not by sight. The scripture here says, Psalm 115, that the, the Lord, may the Lord give you increase more and more. You and your children, may you be blessed by the Lord who made heaven and earth. Now, uh, let me take you over to, i got to get all this out here. Then I'm going to show you how you know you're in a good church. Thank you, Jesus. How you know you, you got the right shepherd. Somebody needs to know that. Um, okay, Jeremiah. We're going to spend a little time in Jeremiah 31, but I want to look at this from the Message Bible. Anybody have the Bible app? I encourage you to get the Bible app. Anybody have the Bible app? There's a, a, a translation. Now, it, it has, I'm, I'm in here right now. I got, a, I got like three Bible apps. Come on now. I know the message is in here. I've been here before. Okay. All right, here we go. Didn't type it in right. Okay, so look for the, the Passion Translation. It's TPT in the Bible app. Boy, it's some good stuff in there. That's a really good translation to, to look at. So uh, just wanted to point that out to you. 
while it was on my mind. Okay, Jeremiah 31. Ooh, man, you should mark this. I've got a cup that I bought from uh, a friend of mine, and it's got this verse from this translation on the cup. Thank you, Lord. Um, boy, I love this. It says, we're talking about Israel. Man, where do I want to? Let's just back up to verse 1. And, and when that happens, God's decree, it will be plain as the sun at high noon. That's pretty plain, isn't it? You know when that sun's shining, we've had some good sun here in Fort Wayne these last few days. I've been riding my bike out there, man. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I don't mind the heat. It's that cold that I have a little trouble with. Plain as sun at high noon. I love how God give us pictures. And it says, what's going to be plain as the sun at high noon? I'll be the God of every man, woman, and child in Israel. Now, Israel is like the type of the church. In these days, this is, this is in the Old Covenant. Now watch this. And they shall be my very own people. How do we know that's New Covenant? He, he says in, in, in Hebrews that he'll be our God. They'll, they'll not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother saying, Know the Lord. It's all shall know me. From the least to the greatest. God said, I'll, I'll be their God and they'll be my people. So, see, this is talking about us, too. This is the way, now, he elaborates on this. This is the way God put it. They found grace out in the desert. How many of you know we're under a gospel of grace? These people who survived the killing, Israel, out looking for a place to rest, met God out looking for them. <laughs> I love it. God is looking for you. <clears throat> you may be in a desert place in your life. You may be in a tough place. But don't think God has forgotten you. He has not forgotten you. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. He's with you all the time, even in the midst of trouble. Thank you, Lord. Man, this just keeps coming on me. There's people who, who are in, they, they're in a difficult spot right now, in a crisis place in their life, in some trouble. You may be watching online, but there's some people right here. I want, I want, this, this is a, a, an encouraging message to you. He's your God. Yeah. He's, he's right there with you. Here it says, look, looking, <clears throat> Israel out looking for a place to rest. See, grace is a place of rest. They met God out looking for him. God told him, and here's what I want you to see. God told him, everybody say God told him. I'll, I've never quit loving you and never will. Expect love, love, and more love. Woo! Thank you, Lord. And I love you. Let me just keep on reading. This is good. And so now I'll start over with you. You know, you can get a fresh start with God. I'll start over with you and build you up again. If you're discouraged, God will build you up again. I like what Paul said, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up. 
What builds you up? The word of his grace is able to build you up and give you an inheritance. Here, here it says, I'll start over with you and build, <coughs> excuse me, build you up again, dear virgin Israel. You'll resume your singing. You're going to get your song back. And it starts right now. Just start singing. See God singing over you and rejoicing over you. And you start singing. Because you're expecting. God told you. What did he tell you to expect? Love. Love and more love. Thank you, Lord. You resume your singing, grabbing tambourines and, join, and joining the dance. Huh? It's party time. You'll, back, you'll go back to your old work of planting vineyards on the Samaritan hillsides and sit back and enjoy the fruit. Oh, how you'll enjoy those harvests. Thank you, Lord. Man, this is, this is so good. Anybody receive that? Hallelujah. I'm still an appetizer right now. I don't know how far we get here. We'll go as far as we can. Thank you, Lord. Now, um, Jeremiah chapter 23. Verse 1. How many of you know that Jesus is the chief shepherd of, of the church? Pastors are under shepherds under Jesus. Okay, I'm teaching here. All right. Now, verse 1, Jeremiah 23, 1. None of these are in the Bible app. I just, this is breaking news. <laughs> Amen. Sometimes you, you're watching a program and they interrupt with some breaking news. Okay, this is. This is breaking news. Woe to the shepherds. Now, notice it doesn't say shepherd. So shepherds, plural, is referring to pastors. Because there's only one chief shepherd. So this is, this is a prophecy, really, of these last days. And it says, woe. Woe. So everybody say, Woe. Woe to the shepherds who destroy and, and scatter the sheep of my pasture, says the Lord. Thus says the Lord God of Israel. God is very serious about the church. And um, he's, not, he's not pleased with pastors who mess with sheep and whoop and beat the sheep. Shepherds don't beat the sheep. Let's, let's go on reading. Woe to the shepherds who destroy and shatter the sheep. Scatter the sheep of my pasture, says the Lord. Therefore, thus says who? The Lord. The Lord God of Israel against the shepherds who feed my people. Now, listen. This is what shepherds should do. This is the primary job of pastors is to feed. Now I want you to know whether or not you, you, you are an usher or a greeter or you're doing the sound or whether you're in a children's ministry. The, that's not why you don't come to church to do those things. And those things are good to do and pastors need your help in those areas. You don't, you don't come to church to sing. The primary reason that you come to church is to feed. See, that's what God is interested in you feeding. Are you listening to me? Like Mary and Martha Mar uh, uh, God was more pleased with Mary, Mary when Jesus came to Martha's house. G God was more concerned. M Martha was in the kitchen cooking ribs and black-eyed peas and, and all that. Kind of, she was all that kind of stuff. She's in there, salmon, shrimp. Uh, 
shrimp fried rice, lobster tail, crab legs. Somebody hungry? <laughs> Fettuccine Alfredo. But Mary was sitting at Jesus' feet, hearing the word, listening to Jesus teach. And God was more pleased with what Mary was doing. He said, Martha, Martha, you're careful and troubled about so many things. Mary chose the necessary thing. See, so God was more interested, or was more pleased with Mary, who was feeding, than, than he was with Martha, who was what? Serving. It's good at serving the church. But that's not what you come to church for. You come to church to feed. And that's very important. Now, you also feed yourself during the week. But listen, when I come to a restaurant, I want good food. And when you go to a church, you want to go where you don't, you don't go for the singing. You go for the feeding. Now, if I had a choice between, like, bad teaching and the best singing in town and, and, a, and a church that singing was bad but the teaching was phenomenal and, and <coughs> excuse me, anointed teaching, I'm going for that anointed teaching. I put up with the music. I'll put up with some other areas that might be lacking. Some people, they look at churches like it's like a shopping list. Well, I kind of like this, but I don't like that. Let me just cut through all, all, all of this for you. Just go where you're being fed. When you leave there, you wipe your mouth, you wipe your mouth out. Man, that was good. Huh? Thank you, Lord. So, the, the woe to the shepherds is sh destroy and scatter the sh my flock, scatter the sheep of my pasture. See, the sheep belong to the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord God of Israel against the shepherds who feed my people, you have scattered my flock, driven them away, and not attended to them, Behold, I will attend to you for the evil of your doing, says the Lord. But I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all countries where I have driven them and bring them back to their folds, and they shall be fruitful and increase. See, that's a result of being in the right church. You are fruitful and you increase. It's not going to happen necessarily overnight. But you eventually, if you stick, to, stick with it, you'll be fruitful and you'll, you will increase. I, I offer people a 90-day challenge. Not that we're the only good church. I don't misunderstand me. But I, I give people who come here a 90-day challenge. If, if you could stick with this for 90 days, 13 Sundays, come as much as you can, and... Uh, you won't recognize yourself. That's our guarantee. You won't guarantee, you, you won't. Our guarantee is you won't recognize yourself after 90 days. I've had nobody call me on that. I've, I've had nobody ask for their money back. <laughs> oh, my goodness. No. The, I'm kidding about that. I mean, no, I mean, nobody came to me and said, that didn't work. Let me say that. Because people, they go off. They say, oh, yeah, I heard that. They, you, people start all kind of rumors about people that don't even go here. So, oh, I heard they got an ATM in there. And I, I heard you got to, to be a member, you got to show them your W-2. People say stupid stuff, man. I'm like, what are you all talking about, man? See, these are the kind of, those are trollers. Even if you see them, even though they're not online, they're trolling on the street and in the barbershops and the beauty salons and all this kind of stuff. 
When people say that kind of stuff, don't even answer, answer that kind of stuff. You invite them to church and they say, I heard you got to show your W-2 to join. Just, just don't even answer them. I mean, what are you going to do with that? I mean, <laughs> so, all right. Here's what you want to look for. Verse 4, I will, I will set up shepherds over them who will feed them. See, in a church, this is what you look for. Are you being fed? Okay, here's going to be a sign when you're getting good food. Now, God is very plain. He doesn't leave it to our imagination. He tells us, look, says, look. And, and they shall fear no more. That's a result of sitting under anointed teaching. You're not going to be afraid. Fear will begin to dissipate out of your life. Okay? Nor be dismayed or, or, or discouraged. See, discouragement will leave. You leave fired up. See, I will set up shepherds over them who will do what? Beat them. How many of you know there's, there, are people, there are shepherds who beat the sheep? You're not in the right church when you leave and you feel like you're beat up. You feel like you're, you're not good enough. You're not strong enough. That you're weak. You leave worried. You leave feeling like you're not measuring up to God's standard. You feel like that God doesn't accept you. You feel like that you're not loved because of something that you did. That is not the right church. Where your sins are being pointed out. It's getting quiet in this Presbyterian church. They'll fear no more. Looks like we won't get into healing today, but I want you, I want I, I promise you God wants you healed. Oh, here's this last one. Anybody anybody bring this up in your Bible somewhere? Tell me what that last statement said. Huh? Y'all do have Bibles. Y'all got, everybody got these smartphones. No wonder y'all looking at me. I'm in Jeremiah. You need to know, know, know this. Jeremiah 23. You'll fear no more. You'll, you'll, you'll not be dismayed. Nor shall we what? Nor shall they be lacking. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not lack. See, when you're following the good shepherd, see, and our job is to point you to Jesus, to see Jesus, you'll not be lacking. Thank you, Jesus. And see, good shepherds are going to give you, let me go on reading here. We'll just stick with this. I, I, I refer to one of the names of God as Jehovah Tishkenu, and it's right here in this passage. Behold, the days are coming. This is really a prophecy of these days. Behold, the days are coming. The fifth verse says, says the Lord that I will raise to David a branch of righteousness. A king shall reign and prosper. That's Jesus. And execute judgment and righteousness in the earth. In his days, Judah will be saved and Israel will dwell safely. You want to know what his name is? And this is his name, which he will be called the Lord, our righteousness. See, and this is the message 
of the last days, that Jesus is our righteousness. See, the message of grace is a message of righteousness. He who knew no sin, Jesus, and see, people misunderstand righteousness. Righteousness is not a, it, 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 righteousness isn't right doing, but right being. Oh, somebody need to write that down. See, righteousness is not a state of, it's not a state of doing. It's a state of being. Righteousness is a gift. You can't do anything to earn it. Righteousness is uh, it's a state of being. Your stat it's, it's a status. You have a status of righteousness. You, you can't earn it. He who knew no sin, Jesus, he became. See, it's a state of being. How many of you know Jesus never committed any acts of sin? But he took on our sin nature. He, be, he became sin. See, sin is not wrongdoing. Sin is a state of being. You know in Romans chapter 6 when it, when, it, when it goes on talking about, read Romans 6 sometimes. Sin is mentioned a lot. Do you know that, um, the, if I have this correctly, and I believe I'm, I'm, I'm correct in this, the only time in Romans chapter 6, and with a good concordance you can figure this out. I mean you can go look it up for yourself. I challenge you actually to go in Romans chapter 6 and see how many times sin is mentioned. And then go back. It's mentioned several times. But the church focuses on so much sin as like doing sin or acts of sin. But actually, I challenge you to go to Romans 6 and look at all of the words for sin and find out how many times sin is a noun versus the time that it's a verb. You know what a noun is from those of you that at least got a C in English. Like it's a person, a place, or a thing, right? Verb is action or, or, or something you do, okay? I'm teaching here. Now, so in Romans, do you know how many times sin is a verb where it says, Sin shall not have dominion over you, for you're not under law, but under grace. Sin, in that verse, is an act of sin. It is the only time in this whole chapter that sin is referred to as a verb. All other times, sin is referred to as a noun, like it's a person. See, sin that Jesus took on the cross was our sin. It wasn't sinning. See, see, mo most churches focus on sinning and stop sinning. But you'll stop sinning when you understand Jesus took our sin nature on the cross, which produces sinning. And so when you realize that Jesus took your sin nature, then you understand, oh, you understand now that you are no longer a sinner. You are the righteousness of God in Christ because he took your sin that we might become the righteousness of God in Christ. So if you see yourself as a sinner, what are you going to do? Sin. But if you see yourself as the righteousness of God in Christ, Righteousness as a state of being. See, right being will produce right doing. Oh, man, I'm so excited. I love that. 
See, people focus on the wrong thing. Live, live right, live right, live right, live right, church. No. Focus on you are the righteousness of God in Christ, right being. See, sin is not wrongdoing. Sin is wrong being. And wrong being is what produces wrong living. So how do you get rid of the wrong being? Receiving Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And now you are the righteousness of God in Christ. But so, so many uh, believers are unaware and they're not righteous, conscious. They see themselves as sinners saved by grace. You cannot be a sinner saved by grace. It's a contradiction of terms. You either a sinner or you saved. Once you save, you're not a sinner. You're saved by grace, and once you're saved, you are no longer a sinner. You are a new creation. You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen. Whew. When you identify with who you are. Right being. See, we say right believing produces right living. It's the same thing. This is believing right. When you believe that you are right with God, righteousness, right standing with God doesn't come by doing. You believe. When you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, believe in your heart. God raised him from the, from the dead, you will be what? Saved. For with a heart, one earns their righteousness. No, with a heart, one believes unto righteousness. Aha, you're righteous by believing. Okay, now we're done with the appetizer. And all my time is gone. Man, if the church could understand that. And we have to keep preaching it over and over and over. Oh, that Pastor James, all he's talking about is grace and righteousness and believing. And all. all you're talking about is doing and doing and living right and living right and living right and living right. So leave me alone. <laughs> Amen. It's a form of, uh, if you permit me to say this, it's a form of beating. You know, some, some <laughs> see, we <laughs> oh, oh, man, I've never seen this before. It's like verbal abuse. You know, you can get, like, emotionally abused. Yeah. Sometimes, I mean, you, you can get in a marriage, you, it's, it's more than physical abuse. It's like emotional and verbal of abuse. You know that happens in church? People get verbally abused. It affects their emotions. You think it's not important where you go to church? You don't have to take my word for it. Go, over, go back over there and read it. Read it again. Read it for yourself. When you're, when you're being fed, you won't fear. You won't be dismayed. And you won't be lacking. You're going to leave happy. Huh? People talk about, oh, man, they're, the, they're preaching that all that feel-good religion. And, you know, people, they're mad when they say it. Ask them where they go to church so you won't go there. <laughs> Come on. People with rocks in their jaw. I oh, mean, don't talk about that. That old happy, happy gospel. They get mad at Joel Osteen because he's smiling all the time. What are you supposed to do? Frown? <laughs> Come on, man. What are y'all talking about? 
this happy gospel. Was it supposed to be sad gospel? Gospel is good news, last I checked. Huh? What do they call it? Um, I, I got something for this, too. They talk, they talk about it being um, sugar-coated. Yeah, 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 there, there it is. That's what I'm looking for, sugar-coated. Why don't you read the Bible? The Bible says the word is sweeter than honey. Huh? What? It already got sugar in it. You're trying to take the sugar out of it. You're trying to be sugar-free. This is not, <laughs> amen? No. It preaches sugar-free. I never heard that before. A sugar-free gospel. No, you want the sugar in it. It's already built in. People want you to eat like, anybody like wheat thins? You don't want that with not, without that sugar in it. They said if you take the, the, all that, the sugar and the salt out of it, it would taste like um, concrete. The stuff before, you know, what did it do like before it becomes solid? Yeah, what it, that's what it would taste like if you took the, the uh, sugar. And I'm not giving you no health lesson. I'm just telling you, you don't want to eat it like that. You may not want to eat it at all now. I don't know. But and you're supposed to be a health instructor. About, you got a box of wheat thing? I can get away with that, but you can't, you can't get away with that. <laughs> every head bowed, every eye closed. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. I thank you that no person will leave here with their spiritual needs unmet. Lord, thank, I thank you for the gospel. Thank you for the good news. I thank you that your word is sweeter than honey. Thank you for the message of grace. Thank you for the message of righteousness. Thank you <coughs> for your shed blood on the cross. I thank you that we're totally and completely forgiven. Thank you, Lord. Because of your good news, we'll fear no more. We'll neither, we won't be dismayed. We won't be lacking. We just, <sighs> thank you. We just enjoy your presence. We just enjoy your goodness and goodness and mercy follows us all the days of our life. I speak to every, every person under the sound of my voice. I, I thank you, Lord, that they'll that they, thank you that you're mindful of them, that you rejoice over them with singing, Lord, that they, will, that they will increase more and more, them and their children, their whole family, Lord, that you are, are mindful, that you're thinking about them right now. I thank you, Lord, that more and more favor comes to them in the name of Jesus, Lord. I just thank you, Lord. We expect more, more more love. Thank you that nothing will separate you. Nothing <coughs> will separate us from your love. Father, I pray that no person will leave here with their spiritual needs unmet. Thank you, Lord. Well, heads are bowed and eyes are closed. If, if you're here today and you've never made Jesus Lord of your life, you've never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I want to let you know that the Bible says if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. I want to invite you to pray this prayer after me. Say, Dear God, I believe that you sent Jesus to die on the cross for me. <clears throat> I believe that he raised Jesus from the dead for me. And I thank you, Jesus, that you are the Lord of my life. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I am saved. If you pray that prayer for the first time, uh, y'all can look up at me. In the seat pockets in front of you, if you pray that prayer for the first time, there's a, a connection card, these little white cards. Um, just pull it out, please. And Check the box that says, I accepted Jesus as my personal Savior and Lord, and give us your first name, email address, and uh, we will send you some information. 
And um, because when you pray that prayer and you pray that for the first time, you you have um, got a heart transplant. Jesus is the Lord of your life. You're a new creation in Christ. It's like I talked about earlier, you are the righteousness of God. Not because of anything you did, but because you believe. You don't have to be concerned about living right anymore. You just keep believing. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Keep seeing Jesus. Amen. Read your Bible. Come to church for 90 days. Um, this is, I'll give you a 90-day challenge so that you, so, so we can feed you, and get you anchored and rooted in this gospel. It's important what you hear. Hear the good news. All right? And once you fill, that, fill this card out, just hold it up. The ushers will come by and get it. Amen? If you're watching online, and pray that prayer for the first time. If you're watching on our, on our online platform, there's a live prayer button midway down your screen. If you click that live prayer button, you'll enter into a private chat area with one of our, our volunteers. They'll be happy to take your information. We're excited for you for uh, making Jesus the Lord of your life. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send you some information to help get your new life with the Lord off to a good start and explain what happened to you when you prayed that prayer. If you're watching on our Facebook um, page, then just go ahead and, and um, message us and say, I prayed that prayer. Please send me that information. Amen. Hope you got something out of this today. Let's give God some praise. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. And congratulations to everybody that made Jesus the Lord of their, their life. Please get in touch with us. Give us your email address. Let us communicate with you. We do want to know where you are you, or who you are. You're very important to us, and we're, we're so glad that you joined us today. Um, those of you that I meant to say this earlier, if you would like to, to give, um, and you're watching online, there's a, a give button on our online platform, but most people are watching on Facebook, and so if you're on our online platform, you can click that give button, and you can give secure, securely, all right? Um, so... Then um, on our on Facebook, there is a way to donate. A, a, there should be a donate button there, and you can give that way. All right? Praise the Lord. Or you can give on, your, our, on our app. If you don't have our app, you're watching today, and you like what you hear, you can get hear more of the same by going to our app. And by the way, if you want to share with people about our ministry, um, there's different ways to do that you can encourage them most people have smart smartphones these days you can tell them about our app we have an app just search in your app store for summit church indiana or you can point them to our website uh, two websites you can point them to first one i would recommend you tell them is the the summit ministries tv okay and because um, all of these websites and the apps everything i'm referring to you to have resources that are available to you, then you can immediately consume content and get fed. Amen. Everything about this ministry is around, revolve around feeding. You can watch on the app, search for Summit Church Indiana. You can get whole messages on this app. Whole, not, not even a whole message. You can hear the audio and just the message only, or you, you can hear the whole um the whole celebration. Then um, aljennings.com, I totally revised my personal website. You can go there and hear the audio, the, the audio messages there, and, and then my writings are on there. I, I, I just began, it used to be just all audio, and I didn't tell anybody about it because I didn't like it. It was old, outdated, and, and it didn't look right. So it was just outdated. So I I vamped it, revamped it, and it looks good. Amen? And so, um, if you look in there and you see my picture on aljennings.com, know, know that, that it, it is me, uh, Ashley Barnett. You know, she busted me up. I'm going to blast you out. She busted me up. She said, oh, Pastor, you know, you, you got that old school picture up. It's like old school. 
What do you mean? Oh, that, that will win. The, you, you gained weight since then. See? And then that's when I had to know who I am in Christ. <laughs> and that's not that old a picture either. It's like, man, I was. Okay, so. Um, what else I wanted to tell you? Okay, so this, so we got aljennings.com and summitministries.tv, Summit Church app. Technology is amazing because you can get, point people directly. I mean, you can, you can give people what you've been feeding on or, or the church, get, give them a taste. And there's nothing like being here, but you can give them a taste before they come. It used to be it wasn't, it wasn't possible. But now with technology, we can. All right? So um, I'm back to <laughs> giving you these announcements. So have mercy on me. And um, anybody want to step up and help us with these announcements, then please let me know so I can stop reading this, these announcements to you. We got gospel concert with Ben Tanker. August the 9th is, is a free concert, okay? Carla already mentioned to you, invite your friends, people that like um, gospel jazz. It's going to be a good time. He, Ben really puts on a, a, good, a good show, and, uh, but he ministers as well. Um, okay, Carla already told you about the uh, women's conference coming up. On the farm, I ride out to the farm a lot on my bike, and I'm familiar with the horses and stuff out there. I might introduce you to some horses if I come out. Yeah, they come up to the fence. Beautiful, man, horses. And, uh, yeah, you might see some animals out there, some roosters. They're not going to be in the meeting, <laughs> but they're around. Huh? Carla don't like cats. You know, there's a cat, there's a resident cat out there. And he comes out when I ride my bike out there. Cats are very keen. They, they can sense things. They, they remember. And I'm a friend of this cat. This cat can sense the love of God in me and the, the anointing on me. And that cat comes around. And when I, I, I come out there, it takes, could take me about 30 minutes to get out, right out to the farm. I, I stop, towel off, you know, rehydrate. And that cat, the cat would come out, and he'd come up and crawl all around my foot and, and rub up on my, my foot and stuff. I, te I text that to Nicole King because she thinks cats are disgusting. That's disgusting. <laughs> you let that cat rub on you and everything. So I sent, sent her pictures to torture her. And Carla don't like cats either. So uh, anyways, um, Gospel Sketch Notes. Book is still available. We still have copies. Check this out. Hebrews of Faith. We've got the booth out there today. The vacation Bible school for, for kids ages 4 to 12. Is the booth out there today? All right. Kids will have a blast. And um, April and crew, they, they do a great job in doing that. We've got a bake sale going on for the for crew who's going to the camp. Okay, the camp is coming up pretty soon. And when is that camp? I don't know. Look at you now. That's the reason why you should have the app. Anything that I made a mistake on, you know, just read the app. Just make sure that I didn't uh, screw something up. But the youth camp is coming up. Yeah, it, they, you have till Sunday, June 16th. This year's camp is from Jul yeah, there it is, July 31st to August 3rd. So all the stuff here is in the app. Amazon, anybody, ever, anybody shop on Amazon? There's a link there that you can support Summit Ministry where Amazon will kick back a portion of, of uh, what you buy and what, what you pay. They kick back a portion of that to Summit Ministries. And all you got to do is just go to the right uh, site, smile dot something, something, something. Stand up, smile dot, dot Amazon dot com and put in Summit Church or whatever. There might be a link to it there. Any questions, go to the um, go to the booth back there 
and they probably won't be able to answer your question. No, <laughs> they, they, should, they should be able to help you, praise God. Say, I am greatly blessed, highly favored, deeply loved, and I'm totally righteous, and I'm destined to reign because of Jesus. All right, I thought I just missed your cue. <laughs> you got a little delay. <laughs> Amen.